Now, this is something you don't see all the time. If you will look, North Carolina has its starting six on the floor. And Caleb Ellis, a graduate player from Apex, North Carolina, who was elevated from the junior varsity team, will go to the side. Boyd Williams puts all of his seniors out there as the officials count, and one of them sends his way back to the bench to make sure that all the guys get to enjoy the start on senior night. All of them are introduced as starters, and on the first possession, Olivier Saar, who has just been playing terrific basketball, the reigning ACC Player of the Week, gets one stuck twixt the rim and the backboard. Here are the five gentlemen who will stay on the floor. Robbie O'Han, like Caleb Ellis, elevated from the junior varsity team, which not a lot of places yep. have anymore, but it's a rich tradition here at North Carolina. Brandon Robinson, a normal starter, has the ball in his hands. Justin Pierce, graduate transfer from William & Mary. Now to Shea Rush. Rush, the son of Jerron Rush, his uncle Brandon and Kareem. Longtime NBA players, played at Kansas and Missouri. Now Wake, here's the starting lineup. Freshman with the ball is Jacoby Neep. He gets the start tonight. And the first bucket of the game is delivered by Isaiah Musius. So far, you want to find a little rhythm. I think for Carolina, you want to just get the ball moving, maybe get one of these guys a good look. But you also want to defend. It's a good opportunity to get in and defend. I love it. Hey, I was talking to Shea Rush this afternoon in practice. I said, let it fly, big fella, and he did. <laughs> Pierce going to get him another one. Mohan putting it on the deck. Shot clock now down to seven. You know, I like this that Roy does. He actually lets the guy stay out there and play yeah. a little bit. Doesn't you know, tell anybody to kick the ball out of bounds and change it. And it'll be an offensive foul drawn by Justin Pierce. And charge comes and charges on Musius. There is Roy Williams having one of the more difficult seasons of his tenure in North Carolina. His 17th season. North Carolina's already lost 17 games. School record for losses in a season is 20 as several guys go to the bench. Keeling, O'Han, and Rush. Cole Anthony has now checked into the game, along with Leaky Black and Garrison Brooks, who's been playing his best basketball of late. Right on cue, Garrison. Thank you very much. Carolina, they found comfort against that zone, against Syracuse. And way coming out in the zone, and the ball's easily moved, and a good seal, and an easy dunk. It's a good way to get those starters in rhythm room. But not starters? <laughs> yeah, guys coming off the bench. The bench points might look a little yes. bit different tonight for North Carolina. Leaky Black with the rebound. Despite the outstanding shooting performance that North Carolina had against Syracuse on Saturday, Danny Manning pretty resolute and that he was going to make North Carolina prove that they could make jump shots. Wanted to make sure that Anthony's shots along with Brandon Robinson's were contested. That one was, and it didn't matter. Cole Anthony with the three. Well, there's different kind of, kinds of contested shots. There's the shots that are contested when you're there on the catch, and then there's other shots where you're closing out. And you want to avoid those long closeouts. Those are easier shots to make. It's the ones where you're there on the catch. That's a good contested shot for a defense. You see us loses it momentarily. Isaiah to work. Olivier Saar has it. He's working on Brooks. Saar puts it up softly. Black to try to push it for Carolina. Saar is coming off the game against Notre Dame and he had a career high 30 points, 12 of 16 from the floor. Well, he's had a couple games where he's really shown some development. Even against Syracuse, just getting position, holding position well and finishing. And Saar is going to be called for the foul as Robinson got by him on the baseline. It's it's his first. There is Danny Manning, the head coach at Wake Forest. It's his sixth season there. Led the Demon Deacons to the NCAA tournament just once and only with one winning season. Though Wake Forest is playing better basketball of late. Yes. Strong performance against Duke. And I thought as impressive John was following it up uh, against the Notre Dame team fighting for his tournament life and really controlling much of that game. But also playing two completely different styles and still being able to dictate rhythm. North Carolina is a sub-30% three-point shooting team on the season, one of the worst in America. They've hit two early, coming off 
Again, you've talked a lot about confidence, and they have a little bit after the Syracuse game, and this one that Pierce has it in the open floor. And he lays it in, and Carolina's off to a hot start, 10-2, with a 10-0 run. You look at the three-point shooting for Carolina, and you say, let's go zone and make them make threes. The problem is you get rhythm by moving the basketball. It's been too easy to move the basketball for Carolina. I feel like they're playing with a lot of confidence. Leaky Black the steal. Black all the way. Missed the layup. Here's Pierce with the putback. And played for the Tar Heels ever since he was a young kid growing up in Kansas. So Roy Williams was the head coach at Kansas at the time. Uh, recruited his father, Jerron, and also bore a very striking resemblance to the family's pediatrician. So a three-year-old Shea was too young to tell the difference between the two. So when his doctor and Roy Williams both moved to North Carolina, he thought they were the same person. So from then on, he said, I was a Tar Heel fan, and even though my dad played at UCLA, my uncle's at Missouri and Kansas, he's wanted to play for Carolina for a long time. And this is a dream come true for both him and I guess Dr. Roy Williams. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his doctorate in basketball. For sure, Brooke, as Brandon Childress scores. You know, Roy, on the Dan Levitard show, they do that March Sadness looks like. Yeah. I could say Roy Williams looks like a country doctor, doesn't he? Like carries the bag, door-to-door yeah. -door visits. Yeah. Old school. Makes house calls. Offensive rebound. Senior Justin Pierce almost rolled in the three. Black tried to keep it alive. Wake Forest Leith on the push, and then underneath, there we go. I see what you did there. Yeah. It's, you, it's a little early for that kind of stuff, but, but you're, you're already on your, on your game. But look, I think for Wake, they've got to get to the basket, especially when you give up so many open looks and some second-chance opportunities. Ideally, push that thing in transition, two consecutive possessions, were they able to get all the way to the basket? But Danny Manning told us today this team has to score from the free throw line. They lead the ACC in free throw attempts per game, right at 24. They shot 50 free throws against Duke. They believe in paint touches. Um, man, Olivier Saar fouled out three Blue Devils yeah. virtually by himself. He had a large role, and he threw 10 fouls on the night. One of the keys to paint touches is getting the defense moving. If you get the defense chasing, then you have an open paint to, to get the ball into. Lucius had it for a second, but Robinson caught him across the arm, and then it'll be Wake Forest basketball, and the foul's going to be on the senior Robinson. I think the old school mentality is the paint touch is throw the ball to the post player and let him go to work. That's not really just, that's not a paint touch these things. Paint touch is get the ball with the bounce in there. Have a cutter flashing, someone flash to the basket. There's a lot of different ways to get that paint touch, and I think Wake's done a much better job of that this year. Well, you see the story of the free throw line for Wake Forest, 25% of their free throws come from the free throw line, he's third in Division One, and the great Dean Smith, who some would say is the Jackson Pollock of coaching all time, with masterpiece, said the most efficient place to score the basketball is from the free throw line. I know some say Michelangelo. I was going to say, uh, uh, is this you? Or are you the only one that says this? Or? No, my, uh, my stats guy, John Madry, <laughs> is a avowed Jackson Pollock fan. He, he wanted me to refer to Dean as Jackson Pollock rather than Michelangelo. A great masterpiece inside for the end one from Garrison Brooks. Well, look, the best basketball is a combination uh, of Pollock and Michelangelo, right? It's not always pretty, right? Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, I guess. Uh, are you, the are best you? coaches that find ways to win in any way possible. And I think the best coaches also adapt to their personnel. They adapt their style to their personnel at times, and it may not look pretty, but it's all about the outcome. That foul was called on Odia Guama. And Garrison Brooks has been a little up and down at the free throw line. We were here last week, yeah. and saw just a <laughs> virtuoso, brilliant performance. He was 14 of 16 from the line, but he's had a couple of overs. One in a close loss to Boston College. Over the night, over five against Duke, and that close overtime loss to Blue Devils. It really is such a confidence thing, right? We talk about the foul shooting dips. It's, it's like a golfer with, with the shanks. I mean, it's nothing you can really try to fix. You just have to shoot and get over it. And at times, he's looked great. I think his shot looks great. Just there are times it just doesn't go in. Well, guys, too, it's taken him some time to get used to wearing the goggles. I mean, the last last week we were here, we saw North Carolina State with a hard foul and just completely break them off his face. But Coach Williams 
telling us today that when he started to wear them, he couldn't even see the rim. He said, Coach, I want to be out there, but you, you can't see it. You can't shoot it. Christian Keeling in the miss in the drive. Before turnover for Wake Forest. Childers with a great bounce pass, and Musius went for the stuff, and he was fouled. What a good look from Brandon Childress. Foul was called on Keeling. Well, it's just got a little loss coming back. Tried to stop the basketball with Cole Anthony. Didn't realize offensive player just sliding right by. It's what the toughest thing when a defense isn't set, it's the hardest defense to play, right? You got to communicate, you got to identify threats. It's not just identify shooters, identify threats. You still protect that basket. Musi is just 14 of 28 from the free throw line. Now over 50%. You're welcome. <laughs> he said he was going to make it, he'd probably miss. Look, I, I didn't the, say either. I just, I know. Stated, just stated the fact. The fact was not that positive, though. You know, it's like he's shooting 50%. So something to prove. Look, I think the See, best on, offense. Let me go back to this. I think the best offense is a team that's got five threats. It's really hard to develop that in a conference like the ACC, where night in, night out, you're going to face different lineups, different styles. And I think that's been one of the challenges for Carolina in finding that balance. On a night, Super Tuesday, where pure objectivity is in rare supply, I would say this stadium is a 50% free throw shooter is the epitome of that, is it not? Yes, that is. And he was just that, one for two from the line. 14-10 as Brooks spins past the freshman. Oh, man, he'll have a chance for a three-point play. Brooks is one of those guys where you do have to play defense early. He does a good job. He's got great footwork. He gets his body into the defender. And if you don't play your defense early, you get, you get caught in a bad situation. Too easy of a catch. You got all the room in the world, no help. Brooks is going to have his way. Obama just picked up his second, and Brooks is coming off a 26.14 rebound performance at Syracuse on Saturday as a quick half dozen. Brooks was right. We were here last week. I mean, he got smacked hard in the face, which made me think it's a good thing he was wearing those glasses. Because those things went flying. It was a scratch corny yes. that, that led to wearing the glasses. There's the sweet, soft touch. He looked terrific shooting in practice today. I, mean, he... I think that's the real head yeah. scratcher. You watch some of these guys and say, he's got a, a really pure stroke. But, but the mental side of shooting free throws is crazy. I mean, you just don't realize it until you, you get into a situation like this. Into the game and getting a shot up to Wake Forest is Ismail Masood. Get it to go off the board. Now Keeling, who's been really playing well on offense, missed the corner. You know, Keeling's seeking out a shot. And you're always a much better shooter when you seek out your shot. Guys that wait for it to come their way, they're not shooting with confidence. He's had two straight games, John, which he said his Carolina high. The way Charleston Southern averaged about 17 points a game. He's found his stride here at North Carolina. That foul called on Leaky Black, his first. Well, it's funny, talking to Coach Roy Williams, I just said, look, I need that consistency. That the guy that doesn't value every possession, you can't trust. And I think he's grown in that department where he's got much better at valuing every possession, not, not making a turnover and trying to make a great play, but being more consistent on the floor. Childress is in trouble for a minute. Sharon right into the game. Shot clock down to his two. Masood's going to have to let it fly. And a good defensive possession for the Tar Heels. Wait, still working that zone. Keeling fumbled the catch and might have been able to get a shot off. So he'll go to his mid-range game, which typically is very reliable, but it rims out. So Carolina's got to be careful not to stand too much against that zone, especially when the ball goes into the post. That's the best time to, to cut and move. Henry and White, who's been a starter for most of the year, and their top three-point shooter makes his 53rd of the season. And of course, it's scratched and clawed its way back within four. Bad turnover for Robinson. Here comes Childress. Childress, a little hesitation, and, and there's going to be a block called on the inside. It's Cole Anthony. Might have been inside the restricted circle. 
That's his first foul. Just under 11 to go. Eight foot handcrafted surfboard gave to Carolina. They're going to go to the tournament in 2020. You see the cast of characters that will be there. Carolina has won the Maui Gym, Maui Invitational four times. You know, the last three times that they won the Maui Gym, Maui Invitational, you know what happened? What happened? They won the national championship oh, wow. as well. How about sure. that? And with four McDonald's All-Americans coming in next year, <laughs> perhaps they'll have an opportunity to duplicate that feat. Where do you put those? Because that's like a, that's the participation one, right? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I would think an eight-foot handcrafted <laughs> surfboard is suitable for you, so you could take it out, right? Sure. But you're, you're, you're only you're only a couple hours from the waves of the Atlantic it's here. It's not a longboard. It's not like a stand-up paddleboard. That looks like a yeah. I mean, it's legit surfboard, right? I would assume so. I just don't know. I mean, this is a team. This is a, a program that collects championships, right? Yeah. Well, a little fun memorabilia. You didn't hurt anybody. Olivier Saar asking for the ball in against Brooks. Spins away, goes baseline, and Brooks fouls him. And Olivier will go to the line to shoot a couple. Sunday night, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app, the ACC Wrestling Championship, the University of Pittsburgh's Peterson Event Center. Coverage of the final starts at 7 Eastern. North Carolina State, reigning champions, and won the ACC title on 16 occasions. Is that your wrestling voice? You gave us a little Sunday night. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. That's monster truck. Mean, oh, you're right. I need to break into a little mean gene. Yeah, yeah a little one. mean gene. Oh, well done. Olivier Saar is really starting to develop. He's more than doubled his scoring average. You see the sports he played as a kid, judo, soccer, and basketball. He's from France. Really starting to come into his own, and Danny Manning telling us today that there's still so much more potential for him to continue to grow as a seven-footer, has pulled the Demon Deacons even at seven. It fell behind right out of the gate on a seven-nothing run to get back even. Falling behind by 10 right at the early going. Well, I think Olivier Sarr has been much better with more responsibility. They've thrown him the ball and allowed him to make plays. And I think the responsibility is what gives you confidence. He only had six points in the first meeting, and Cole Anthony went not dash six from three in the first meeting. He has weight force. He's already hit a couple. He has six points. Well, he's shooting a higher percentage. Huh? I mean, shooting over 50% for three over the last couple of games. I mean, that, that's the key. I think part of it is he's taking better shots. He's finding a better rhythm in the game, and when you find that rhythm, you shoot a higher percentage. Shot very well at Syracuse, 7 of 11 from 3 on Saturday. Finished with 25 points, 8 of 13 overall, and 92-point offensive outburst from North Carolina against Bayheim Zone. Johnny Brown returns for Wake Forest, a physical junior card. Wake Forest is 9 and 3 this year when Brown gets into double figures, but he's still got the bagel in the scoring column so far tonight. Anthony misses, Brown gets the rebound. No offensive rebound on that trip. In North Carolina, you might have noticed that Armando Baycott has not yet checked into the game. Sprained an ankle against Syracuse. It's in the opposite ankle from the one he hurt earlier this year. He was doing a little bit in practice. They thought he might try to give it a go, but so far we've not seen North Carolina's leading and best offensive rebound. Oh, he just occupies such space. Uh, I mean, he's a tough guy to keep away from the block. The more you use him around the perimeter, the, the harder it is to block him out. And you play text into the game. Brandon Robinson for three. And defense for Wake Forest just getting lost. They've gotten lost a couple times following the basketball. As they follow the basketball, they follow it with their eyes. You lose sight of your man, and that's a simple, simple principle that it's so easy to forget as you age in this game, right? It's see man, see ball. Throws a wild looking shot from Ishmael Masu. And Anthony's back into the front court on the push. He gets by me, lays it up. Lucius clears it away for the Deeks. Brooks and Leaky Black. 
waiting to return. Childress and Saar the same for Wake Forest. A little high-low action, good dump inside. But you see as the Wild figured out he was wide open. And he, he laid it on. Yeah, Cole Anthony gave him a little flyby, but, but a good sit-down, good, good footwork. And those are things, just good passing action for Wake Forest to kind of get something going, get some energy going in this game. A couple stops will help. But Keeling's really shot a high percentage, up 58 for 57 percent over his last eight games. Which you can't get one to go so far. In networks, ACC tournament will be in Greensboro on the ACC network in the ESPN championship game on Saturday night, 14. You had to take a flyer from any of those high major tournaments. The team is not going to make the NCAA tournament without winning the conference tournaments. Would you place a chip on North Carolina? I mean, look. We've talked about this. It's, it's hard to really buy into that, but when you start to look closer at it, you'd say yes, considering all the close losses for Carolina, considering how much better they've gotten over the last few games, I, I think a lot will be determined by whether they come out with confidence against Duke. Shondi Brown went and put one off the glass, but he's called for the offensive foul. I think one of the most... Just the craziest stories has been UCLA, though. UCLA, what, just what a crazy story. I mean, not even in the conversation. Kind of left for dead in December, and, and they just turn it around. They're tough, they make physical, playing with confidence, and Mick Crow's done a terrific job out there. They win the Pac-12 Pac regular season. Now, we've seen Pac-12 regular season teams get left out in the past. Happened to Washington a few years ago, so there's no guarantee that they'll make it. But they, Appear to be trending toward the right side of the bubble, and foul was called off. It's a foul on Garrison Brooks. It appeared to be a proper call from my vantage point. Yeah, the little extent of the arm. I think he did a great job of holding position. It wasn't egregious, but it is about that advantage game. I think those are the calls that I like the most. If you're doing something to gain an advantage, make the call. And if no advantage is game, let go. Garrison foul was his second. Cuts off Shondi Brown on the baseline. Musius for three. I still feel like for, for Wake Forest, you, you've got to start to play with a little bit of assertion on the offensive end. That doesn't mean take bad shots. It means cut with a purpose. Pass with a purpose. We've seen a couple opportunities that just haven't come together because they had not made good passes. Childress got up somehow. Looks as if Leaky Black was going to swat it away. And Brandon now has six. It's a two-point game. Oh, how that got up. I thought, it, I thought Leaky had that thing swatted. And somehow wound up in the basket. I got an opportunity. Got the switch. Now Brooks on the baseline draws a foul. And he'll go to the free throw line. Look, how this thing gets up, and I like, this is what I talk about, just be aggressive. How that didn't get blocked. I mean, it's like an Ephus pitch that you whiff on, right? It was just sitting right there. It's baseball season, right? Yeah. Olivier Saar has picked up his second foul. Odio Guama is at the scorer's table. He's going to return. He also has two. It's interesting. Olivier Saar picks up the foul. He was the backside help. And you've got to know, Musius in that moment, you're covering the big. You can't give him that angle because it puts Saar in a bad situation where all he could do is foul. And those are the things that you develop as you go, right? And, and that's the feel we talk about. Feel is also knowing I, I've got a foul. I don't want to pick up another one. Let me get over early and just wall up. Play safe defense. Saar coming off that 30-point game against Notre Dame. Only had six in the first meeting against Carolina. Just has a couple of free throws. He's on the bench with a couple of fouls as Childers takes a tumble. And Cole Anthony's going to pick up his second foul. Reminder that nothing but net crew will be at the ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. Greensboro Coliseum Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern. And that will wrap up the quarterfinal matchup. Highlights and full breakdowns of every game. You can only get this analysis and insight one place, right here on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. Fans didn't like that call. <laughs> Look, I think, I think at some point they have to call the initial hand check because a lot of times the initial hand check that isn't called leads to a travel that ends up getting called. 
and we talked about the freedom of movement, yeah. but a lot of times that initial hand check causes a problem for the offense. So you let it go, and it becomes an issue. Air ball from Leaky Black. Knees on the push, Sean D. Brown, and Leaky keeps him from getting the layup, and it'll be North Carolina ball, sixth turnover in the night for the Deeks. It's not egregious, but that's a hand check. Again, not bad, but it's just, it's a hand check. It's to gain an advantage as a defender, so you do have to call that. Don't get me wrong, I specialized in a, in a hand check when I played. I think I two hand check, like double hand check. But the game is so different nowadays in the sense that they're trying to take that away and it does give the advantage to the offense. Good, Good look from Anthony and Brooks puts it home. Cole Anthony's an underrated passer. Not as if he's like underrated in the sense that we don't appreciate. Look, the kid's just a player. That was so good it looked like an accident. Yeah. Watch the flip behind the head. I, I'm telling you, look, sometimes the best scorers can be the best passers because if you watch the drive, he drew three defenders. And that foul shot looked good. That Boy. foul was on Oguama. John, it's his third. And the freshman who Danny Manning says, Plays with a lot of intensity, plays hard, but still sort of learning what he's doing out there. I would advise being careful coming out to set the ball screen right now, too. Yes. There he is. <laughs> they call that every single time. Yeah. They just stand there. Yeah, he kind of gets a little anybody. nudge, too. <laughs> you see us from just inside the three point line. He has seven. Yeah, but you know what Aguama's got that you've got to appreciate? He's got a motor. You know, he's looking to set screens, sometimes to a fault. Brooks fumbled it away. It was an unforced turnover. Fourth turnover of the night for Carolina. Brown, and it'll be an offensive foul on Brown. Good position by Justin Pierce. Second foul on Chandy Brown. And the team that leads the ACC in getting to the free throw line is instead committing a lot of fouls tonight. Yeah, and Justin Pierce got there early. That's a tough play in transition. And that is just reading the game. That's not just reading the play. That, that is, I guess, say, feeling that game out. The ball's thrown ahead. He realizes his teammate's not in position to stop the drive. Put himself in a position to get the stop. Now, Brown's averaging nearly 13 points per game, but he's yet to scratch tonight. Anthony. Bucket. Nine for Cole Anthony. That's, that's too easy for the best scorer on the floor. I think he's shooting a little better than he did in Winston-Salem. 0 for 6 from 3 that night. 5 of 19 from the floor. What might have been his poorest game as a Tar Heel. And he's come out playing some excellent basketball in the first half tonight. Oh, man, it got away with one there. <laughs> he picked up another foul on that screen. He's not shy in there. He's not... Brooks with the shot clock at five. And a fade away. And fight for the rebound in there. I think the foul is going to be called on Justin Pierce. Cole Anthony's, if he moves well, if he reads the defense well, as he does here, he's going to get open shots. And we There's a couple guys elevated from junior varsity squad, but freshman class, part of that national championship yep. team, 2017, to beat Gonzaga. North Carolina with a six-point lead. See, their shooting from three is much improved. Yes. Five of nine tonight, one of 16 in the first meeting. Garrison Brooks, Cole Anthony have scored 21 of the 31. Wake Forest is staying on brand. They're now nine of 10 from the free throw line. Scored well over 30% of their points in the line, and they've made more free throws than North Carolina has attempted, which is always one of the goals of Danny Manning's team, and they've executed that part of it fairly well. Bucius goes one for two, and they get the bounce out. A chance to draw even closer. And guys, the message out of the Wake Forest huddle was taking care of the basketball. Carolina with 12 first half points off turnovers. A lot of those coming in force. You've seen charges, just shots that had turned into fouls and turnovers. So that's their biggest focus as these last three minutes go of the first half. So like travels like that, that's, that's a problem. That was, yes, that was like on cue. I, I think sometimes it's hard when you point that out and say, guys, we got to take care of the basketball. You start to overthink it, and at times it, it makes you turn the basketball over. You want guys to make smart plays, but you also need them to be aggressive. That, that's that tough 
a balance that you're seeking out throughout the course of the game. Demon Deacons are next to last in the ACC in turnovers per game, averaging about 14. And they're on pace. They already have eight in the first half tonight. Short miss from Pierce. Childress on foot. He's a Kreneath. The freshman who maybe wasn't quite ready the first time he got some chances to start an ACC play, but had some positive contributions in the first half tonight. He wasn't able to get the bucket to go. High, low, and miscommunication from Pierce and Garrison Brooks results in a Carolina turnover. I gotta think this pace right now favors Carolina. There's Brooks running ahead. Anthony found him, and Garrison just fumbled the thing away. And some active hands from Demon Deacons, but typically Garrison's a little stronger with the ball around the bucket. I do think this is a team that does run well. And Cole Anthony, again, we, we underrate his passing because we know him to be more of a volume scorer. He's a guy with good vision. Blake's looking that ball back and forth. Uh, across the court as if there will be no repercussions. So far, there haven't been. Neath going to fire from three and knock it down. And that was good ball movement. Change sides of the floor, a little dribble action to get inside the paint. That's the paint touch you're looking for. With the bounce, brings the defense with the basketball. Neath with his 11th three-pointer of the year. It only attempted 22 coming in, so he's right at 50%. And there's Garrison Brooks. He now has 14. See, bad or awkward misses are the easiest offensive rebounds. They just never come off the way that you would think a rebound's gonna come off. Brooks was right there. Andrian White, a smooth looking three. He's got a couple of those tonight. He's got six points. And the strange thing with the energy of this game, it doesn't feel like a one point game. It, it feels as if Carolina has been in control, but Wake has had answers when they need to have answers. And then Robinson inside the three-point arc. He's got eight. It's kind of a, it's like there's, there's not intensity. There's a little bit of a running in mud feel to it, even when the pace gets a little quicker. Imagine a close game. We'll pick it up in the second half, see how each team finishes the first half. Childers goes underneath the bucket and lays it home. Brandon Childers into double figures. It's kind of that murky flow to the game. Anthony misses. Musius with the rebound. And after all of this, Wake Forest has a chance to go to the locker room with a halftime lead. Carolina started this game so strong. Uh, you think about it, they started six seniors, right? Took one out. And you, you bring in the regular starters, and they went on a terrific run. 10 2 run to get this thing started. But now, since settled in, and I, I think Wake has more confidence now. Not even having Olivier Sara on the, on the floor. Childress. Missed it. Ball out of bounds. It'll stay with Wake Forest. They've got 3.2. Try to get a shot up. Need some substitutes coming in for the final seconds. Ismail Masood returns for Wake Forest. Keeling, Leaky Black back on the floor. Playtech back out there. Now he'll return to the bench. Smart move. Get Odio Guava off the floor. Let's not pick up yep. your fourth, fourth foul yeah. here with 3.2 seconds left. And there might be some contact here in the last 3.2. Nodi is not a man who shies away from no. contact. Which I appreciate. Underneath, not much room. Musius fades and can't get it to go. And Wake Forest, who had a 2 0 lead to start, very nearly hit the last basket of the first half to take the lead. As it is, North Carolina on senior night leads by a single. 35 34 the score at the break. Stay tuned for the ACC halftime. Roy referring to Armando Baycott, as I'm sure you know, sprained an ankle against Syracuse, did not practice yesterday, went through some work during the shoot-around earlier today, went through warm-ups, and ultimately decided that he would not be able to play. Brandon Robinson, first shot of the second half, rims out, Saar back into the game, and he has a rebound. Now, Saar didn't score much, only had a couple of free throws. He did have five rebounds in the first half, so he has a half dozen. I think Carolina's much improved from the three-point line in the second game in the first time. And Wake Forest with several guys contributing to their offensive cause. They hope to get more from that guy, Olivier Saar, here in the second half. 
Kobe Neath trying to get it to the corner, and it's knocked out of bounds. There'll be five left on the shot clock for the Deeks. Well, part of Carolina's success from the three-point line was getting good shots, and getting good shots is not just open looks. There are shots that you catch the ball in rhythm, and they were able to move the basketball easily against the zone, so I would look for that early in the second half. If Wake Forest is going to commit to the zone, move the ball around. Get inside, get that dribble paint touch, kick out. Those are the high percentage threes you're looking for. And they tried to get it to Saar in the inbound and a turnover for Wake Forest. Cole Anthony, who didn't hit a three in the first lead, he hit three of them in the first half, and that is his second just electrifying assist. Third assist of the game. Two of them have just been beautiful like that. Just a, a little look off, and you got to remember, when you're such a scorer as Cole Anthony is, all the eyes flow to the basketball, and that's when opportunities to cut back the heat behind, behind the defense, excuse me, are going to be there. Cole knocks it away and almost did the splits, showing the great flexibility. I'd be done for the year. <laughs> I'd be done for the year. Boy, since coming back from that knee injury, he would be second in the country in scoring among freshmen if he had played enough games to qualify statistically, but scored right at 20 points a game. Saar gets the offensive rebound and goes up in his first field goal of the night. Cole oh, Anthony quickly in transition. That, that's where he's at his best. In transition, like I said, just he's got a knack for scoring the basketball, and it's not something you can teach. It's just something you do, and he's got it. Isaiah Musi is from three, and we're locked up at 39. Say, Wake Forest has had answers. Struggling to get stops at times, and I like going back to the man here. They, they were better in the man in the first half than they were in that zone. Robinson, corner three. Just not on that position. <laughs> 11 for Brandon Robinson on his senior night here in Chapel Hill. And Robinson has been dealing with a bad ankle for virtually the entire year. Quit bothering him a little bit there. Leaky Black blocks Shondi Brown's shot and then making matters worse. Shondi's going to be called for the foul as Robinson tries to walk it off right in front of Roy Williams. Well, Roy Williams even said, because I, I asked him against that in, in the NC State game, it seemed like he landed funny, maybe on his foot. He said, no, he actually took a shot to the ribs. And, and, he, and he choked that he, he didn't really have a lot of cushion there to withstand the blow. And it didn't x-ray, seemed like everything was all right. The foul on Brown was his third, so he'll spend some time on Danny Manning's bench. Robinson, the senior from Douglasville, Georgia, still just about 175 pounds if he's had a really good meal. So he put out on about 10 during his time. He's just a lean, thin guy. Must be should, nice. I was going to say, we all should be so lucky, right? Ishmael Massoud from the corner rattles out, and Brandon has the rebound. See Pierce cut baseline right there. Would you like to see him come in there a little more aggressively, a little more purpose? Hey, look, if you if you want the basketball, you got to cut in front of the defense. You got to make contact with the defender. What I didn't like was when Paul Anthony kind of went to play back to the basket. Pierce ran right in front, and that's what I talk about, like the feel, that chemistry part of the game. You've got to play together a lot to develop that. And quite frankly, if I'm going big picture college basketball-wise, I think that's been an issue in college basketball. You've got so many new pieces year in, year out. And we want to say that's the one and done. It's also the transfers. you got so many transfers. It's hard for these guys to develop a chemistry on the floor. Zaliki Black shoots the free throw. And that was a rather big foul called against Wake Forest. It is the third for Olivier Saar. So the freshman, Odio Guama, who played a good portion of the first half with three fouls because Saar was on the bench as Danny Manning was trying to protect him. And now Danny is counseling his seven-foot junior center. How long until Oguama picks one up? I mean, he's a guy, he just goes hard. And I don't want to say he's got one speed, but he's, he's got energy and effort <laughs> at times. Dre picks up even on those screens. He sets a great screen, but he's calling a lot of those fouls. Got his fourth rebound on the defensive end and was knocking folks around coming out of there, going for the offensive board. Manning's really high on his feet. He just has to learn a little more about how to play. And that was a smart play right there, not to foul. He's trying to defend Garrison Brooks. 
And Garrison now has 16. And Garrison Brooks just took the glasses off, threw them onto the sideline. Souvenir for somebody. Every time we come, he does that. He did it last week against NC State, too. Childress a little pull up. Brandon Childress now with a dozen. So there's mid-range game and then there's just good decision. That's a good decision. Why take it into the teeth of the defense when you shoot a little 10 foot float? Went for the lob to Garrison Brooks and now if you had one minute and took the under on Iguama's foul, you are a winner as Odie picks up his fourth. The misuse for Wake Forest. ACC basketball is brought to you by Zaxby's hand breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order. Let's take a look at tonight's player spotlight brought to you by Geico, and it is Cole Anthony. Uh, Cole Anthony has really developed throughout the course of this season. At times, look, we've seen him score a lot of points, but if you watch his overall game, he's gotten much, much better share of the basketball more. He's feeling out his opportunities, making teammates better. And I gotta say, the more he moves with the basketball, the better this team is. Garrison Brooks at the free throw line after that foul on Oguama. The player spotlight brought to you by Geico. Anthony's really shot the ball well his last couple of games. You mentioned earlier, 7 of 11 from 3 against Syracuse, 8 of 13 overall. He's hit three three-pointers tonight. Garrison Brooks has shot well from the free throw line recently and tonight. This is the pair there. Well, he's hit three three-pointers and they were all good looks. Yeah, I didn't think that's the thing. That's, I get it. Look, you got to get the best scorer shots. He's one of the best scorers in the country, so you got to get him shots. But I think when he takes good ones early, he creates a rhythm for himself and for his team that just makes the game easier. Leaky Black just picked up his second foul. John, let's set the foul situation right now for Wake Forest, and it is a bit of an issue. Oguama, one of their big men, Odie Oguama, is on the bench with four fouls. Olivier Saar, the seven-foot big man, the reigning ACC Player of the Week, has three fouls right now. So two to Shondi Brown, who's averaging about 13 points per game. And at the moment, none of those guys, all of them important to Wake Forest fortunes, on so the sad. floor. Yeah. They look just sad faces. It's terrible. Look. It's tough, and right now, Wake, I think this is what they've got to do, pick up pick up the pace of the game a little bit, even though that does at times favor North Carolina. You've got to speed the game up a little. Little traps, get the ball out of the scorer's hands. Pretty small lineup out there right now for Wake Forest, and Brooks will go back to the free throw line as he's fouled. And a lot of people say, well, go zone. If you go zone, it helps, you know, keeps, out, keeps guys out of foul trouble. The problem is when shots go up against the zone, you as a defense are not in position to rebound. You're not boxing anybody out. And you often give up offensive rebounding opportunities when you don't have that size advantage. It's going to be tough sled. Ishmael Massoud was called for that foul. Brooks returning to his previous form by knocking in that free throw. So how much longer do you think Sar sits for the three foul? It's going to be tough. I mean, it, it, you know, three points, not a not a bad deficit. I still think the foul shots from Brooks look good. Mm -hmm. Six and nine tonight. And we consider his struggles. They, they look good. They look like he's shooting with confidence. But yeah, I, I'd say look, you get five, five, six, seven points down. But again, it's feel. Coaches don't just look at the scoreboard and say, oh my gosh, we're losing this game. They, they got to feel it out too. What's this group on the floor doing? That's great action offensively. So maybe let's stick with that. A tremendous pass. Brandon Childress inside the Musius. He's got a two-point game. The crowd is not full here tonight. A few seats scattered here and there in the rafters. Late arriving crowd. From snarled traffic as is customary in the Triangle region on workday afternoon. But it's been a little quiet right now. Another good look from Anthony Brooks. Finishes it all. Brooks with 20 again. He's just been on a scoring tear of late, John. We saw him in a 25-plus point game against NC State. Did the same thing against Syracuse. Could be on his way to three in a row. He's had his 10th 20-point game of the season now. Childress along the baseline. That was pretty. That looked like the old man right there. That was really pretty. I mean, he took it away from the defense. Because they can't get a stop. Now, Brooks is going to work. There's no size inside to slow him down. And Garrison taking full advantage. And 
it's an offensive basket interference on Musius. I think that might have been going in. in, too. I think it was rolling in. The, the little English on the shot from Childress. Look, I hate to say little guys, my size, but look at the spin he puts on the shot. He knows exactly where he's got to get that thing up off the mm. glass. That was going in. International ball still I good. love international ball rules. Yeah, just smash it down. Confused the heck out of me in my first game over in Spain. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what did he do? Anthony pull up. Anthony's doing a good job reading the defense in that ball screen situation. With two come his way, he's looking. But when he's got single coverage, he's going to elevate and, and bury the jumper. Look, I know they haven't put Wake Forest away by any stretch of the imagination as Childress misses the three, but I think anybody that meets North Carolina in the ACC tournament is going to have its hands full. Yes. Anthony! When you get a replay of that, you'll realize how ridiculous that shot was. That was, that was, that was amazing. What a drive and a scoop from the star freshman. Musi is spinning in. He can't get it to go. Brown with the offensive rebound. Good effort by Sean D. Brown. He's back into the game playing with three fouls. How about this move from Cole Anthony? Sometimes it's good just to appreciate it. Look, you have no idea. I think he shot that with his left. I gotta watch he it did. again. Inside hand, sure he did. Shot it with his inside hand. That's ridiculous. Go ahead out back, people. Playing in your, your YMCA league, try to do that. See how many times you can even hit the bottom side of the rim. That was ridiculous. And pushed Carolina's lead to eight as Brown hits the free throw and he's finally into the scoring column. Here's his dad, Greg. I'm pretending he's not as impressed as we are, but he had to be. Don't act like you're not impressed. Look at this. We're not. <laughs> it was too good. We could only show you a couple times. <laughs> I would say watch out, though. When he starts making those shots, watch out. Look, the foot gets on the gas. And, and when you don't have size on the floor for Wake Forest, you got to think that the, the ball's going to get attacked every single time down floor for Carolina. And Carolina's hit 8 of 11 from the floor in the second half, and somehow... Anthony had one that couldn't believe went in, and that last one you couldn't believe it came out. My food with wow. three. Well, Wake Forest, you've used the phrase they've had answers. They've shown some real toughness in here tonight. They haven't wilted for a second. Interesting, but they're shooting those shots with confidence. It's when they get tight. When the game gets tight, they struggle to execute. It's like Auburn. You just got to stay down 10. You're at your best. Uh, Brown's like he didn't get his fourth foul right there. He put two hands on a North Carolina player and shoved him out of the way, and now they're going to go ahead and give it to him anyway. Sometimes when something's really good, we got to keep showing it. This is ridiculous, people. Look, try it. So download that app, the ACC Three Point Challenge app, today. Hashtag good at life. North Carolina's been good at three point shooting. Downloaded some app that's improved their three point shooting. Mid and finally on, the, finally on the board tonight is the senior Christian Keeling. He's really been shooting the ball well, but it struggled early, missed his first four shots, and now he's got his first bucket on his final home game here at Dean Smith Center in his graduate transfer year. No advised pass along the baseline results in a turnover, number 11 for Wake Forest tonight. You and I, you know, we were here last week talking about Christian Keeling, and it wasn't just made shots. It, it was kind of enhanced energy, right? Mm -hmm. He just lifted the team with, with his energy, his effort, but his body language was positive. And when you're struggling, that's more important than you realize. He, the light really came out. He, look, he was already a good player. Go. I mean, there's a dude. He's got a chance for a three-point play. I mean, you don't go. I don't care what level it is. You're Division One. You're averaging 17 points, five rebounds, all three of your season. You can play. But how Roy Williams wanted it to play, the level at which he had to play with every possession, yeah. defense, all of those things, he's improved greatly across the board. And then the offense has been a, a terrific bonus for them. He has a chance to score five straight points. Sharon Wright picked up the foul, oh, and Christian rolls it in. I think that's something that Roy Williams talked about. So just that the level of athlete and the length at this level. And oh, by the way, if you're on the floor, you're, you're an elite level basketball player. A superstar wherever you came from. Sharon Wright, a high arching shot, brought some rain. Sharon was asking for three. The official high steps back to the other end. 
He's just going to get two. Foot on the line. Now Sharon Wright comes up with it. Knee. Oh, not quite Cole Anthony, but a sweet little move underneath. And Wake Forest still hanging around within three. That goes back to the, the answer. The answers are not just what you do on the offensive end. Sar's got to be careful. Yes, he does. He very nearly picked up his fourth foul. Anthony for three. That's the, that's the answer for Carolina. And, and it wasn't just a made shot. It was actually good offensive action. The ball comes in. He curls that screen out. And when he's active and moving and cutting, like I said, it's not just Cole Anthony that benefits. The entire team benefits. He's now hit 11 of his last 18 three-point shots. There's Sar going to work with that left hand. But you're seeing less of the dribble, dribble, dribble threes. You see more of the balls moving, catching fire threes. And split those defenders, and Anthony fouled after the split. Nothing but that. Cameron Indoor after North Carolina and Duke Saturday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Highlights, analysis, complete breakdown of the game. After their first meeting, who knows what you're going to get in the aftermath of that one. You can see it on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. College game day this week at Dayton in the morning, but then we'll be on Cameron for North Carolina Duke at the night. Have a chance to visit with Obi Toppin and Anthony Grant as Dayton yeah. is emerged and a threat to get a one seed. It's, it's funny, it's a really good team. I think the, the toughest thing for Dayton is the fact that their, what do you call it, their best win is a, is a great loss. Um, mainly just because we saw them play against a team that right now I would say is the best team in the country. Kansas, yeah. You know, they, they've made adjustments throughout the course of the season that now make them the best team in the country, especially moving as a bookie around the perimeter. They're much better, but that Dayton team, hey, there's still a lot we don't know about other than the fact that they're a high-level basketball team. Anthony at his 20th point of the night, and Childress answered with a triple. He's got 17. Quite a battle going on between those two fine guards and a sloppy turnover from Carolina. Where the Childress is that guy? He's kind of cold-blooded, right? Step back three again. Wake has had an answer. The question is, can you can you put a good defensive stop with a good offensive possession? 1,300 points, 400 assists in his career. Has a tough pass to handle. And Sharon Wright sort of bounced it off Sar's knee. I had a coach in high school that every time he did that, he threw a pass at a guy's foot. He would stop play. He'd walk up to you, grab the ball, and you knew what he was doing. He would throw it off your shin every single time to prove it. You can't catch that pass, so don't throw it. I just didn't pass to begin with. You know, the thing is, though, I mean, you get the point, but it's like the pitching coach who yells, throw strikes. You know, the guy's like, yeah, well, I'm Rebound trying, to, yeah, I'm I'm trying, trying, trying to throw the ball to the backstop. You know, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm just going to stand there and let it come off the board and let someone else get it. You know, try the parents in Little League. Hit the ball. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Okay, good oh, tip. Strike out. Pro tip. That's a lot. Anthony almost double dribbled. We call them video game coaches. <laughs> they just want to press all the buttons. Spin, shoot, make it. God, I love his mid range. Well, yeah, his mid range is almost <laughs> like a video game and miss. Christian hasn't been quite as hot tonight. Brandon Childress just made a three and then a foul on <laughs> Justin Pierce is called for the foul. That's his third. Red transfer from William and Mary played final game in Smith Center in his lone season as a Tar Heel as Andrian White returns to Wake Forest and Sharon Wright will go back to Danny Manning's bench. White's hit a couple of three balls tonight. He is their most prolific three-point shooter. It's about 37% on the year. I think a lot of fans didn't like it. They showed it up on the big board. It could have been egregious and they wouldn't like it. <laughs> We have a fan that sits near a broadcast position who knows all the officials by name. Oh, yes. And critiques them regularly. Brandon and Childress will go to the line. That's what Wake Forest did very well in the first half. Going to the free throw line is now Justin Pierce. He's picked up two quick fouls, and he has four. Garrison Brooks is at the scores table. Could you imagine officiating in the age of information? I'd rather officiate with, like, a... a, a bag on my head or a, a mask or something a Zorro mask how about that
Brandon Childress, his dad, Randolph Childress, of course, was a spectacular player for Wake Forest. They are the highest scoring duo in ACC history. Talk about cold blooded. Yeah. Approaching 3,600 points now as Brandon continues adding to his total. Randolph scored more than 2,200 in his career, and Brandon a little under 1,400 at the moment. Brooke? I really enjoyed watching how intense he was at shoot around this morning. And he said, listen, if we're going to go through reps and shoot, we're going to do it at a high level. We're already warmed up. So unless you're in here to do it at game speed and execute at game speed, you can go ahead and sit down. I mean, it was just great. He, you know, his intensity, I think, is really one of the things that made him stand out as a player with 107 points in three games at the ACC tournament. Uh, he put, he dropped the 40 spot on North Carolina, one of the great performances in ACC tournament history. He, he and Tim Duncan was in the golden age of Wake Forest basketball, an offensive foul called on the freshman knee. Now let's not lose that last possession where Keeling hit the three right over yeah. the top of the 1-3-1 that Wake Forest decided to show up. Christian Keeling makes a couple, you know, those 15-foot jump shots. It's almost like that's how he gets his rhythm, and then the threes look that much better. When he's good, they've, they've got such better balance on the floor. Harrison Brooks down low, occupying the paint. We've got perimeter shooting. This is where this team can really start to be more dangerous. Five-point lead in the ball for North Carolina as we head toward the eight-minute mark. Harrison Brooks has had another big night. Size advantage on Shondi Brown. Brown's had a lot of fouls called against him. He couldn't draw one that time. And in fact, he's, it's been a tough night. They're gonna call him for the flop. I know they've been asked to do that. I was on record for 5,000 times. It's been a Speedo guy. Yeah, yeah, that's the difference right there. Duke has one more win, two more points. It's all thanks to Speedo guy <laughs> causing missed free throws. You know, we went there for college game day a few years ago, and the idea was floated when Hubert Davis was with us, now assistant in North Carolina. He was an analyst with us at the time to have Hubert and Jay Billis participate in Speedo Guy. They, How'd that uh, go over? Uh, that, not well. They both in unison getting Duke and Carolina to agree, said we're not clowns. So fast forward to the first, uh, the first timeout in Cameron that night, first media timeout, you know, they roll out people and they put them on a surfboard and they roll yes. over people. Well, who's on that surfboard? Hubert and I were watching the game. Here comes Billis on the <laughs> surfboard. And <laughs> Hubert immediately starts going, oh, I'm not a clown. Oh, I'm not a clown. Right? <laughs> for several years, that was sure, the contact yeah. photo was for Billis on my phone, him on that surfboard over the masses at Cameron. I Indian. hope it was only replaced by something good. <laughs> it was. Okay. It was. Him sticking his tongue toward an electric fence. Better. Yeah, pretty good, huh? Back to action here. Not yet. Seven point lead for North Carolina. As soon as I inform yes. the good people who are subscribers to the wrestling ACC course. Network about the ACC Wrestling Championship. Woo! There you go. Well University done. of Pittsburgh's well Peterson done. Event Center. Our coverage of the finals begins at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. NC State is the defending champions. They've won the ACC title 16 times. So let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Mr. Television announcer. If you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. And that means you have to pin the wolf pack. Oh, that was so well done. I thought you were going to come out with a, hey, brother. You know, something, yeah. It's about all, all you little Risa maniacs, say your prayers, <laughs> take your vitamins. All right, serious basketball now. We're we'll back to a five-point game. Brandon Childress knocks down the free throws. A little pressure in the backcourt. T token pressure. I mean, I think Wake Forest understands you can't extend to the point where you give up easy baskets, but you still want to at least dictate where the ball is going to go. That's what the best defenses do. You know, UCL or U UNC just shoot such a high percentage and they continue to get whatever they want. Leaky Black with a strong drive. Boy, Childers has had a really efficient night. We've marveled at Cole Anthony and Garrison Brooks. 21 for Brandon. He's working on Anthony now. Gets the pick from Saar. Now, well, Musi has tried to bump Cole out of the way. Good work, strong take by White, and he'll go to the free throw line and wait. Really adept at getting to the line. Doesn't show quite as much in the second half as he did in the first, but starting to pick up a little bit as Leaky Black picks up his third foul. And a good seal by Olivier Saar there, right? A lot of times, Biggs will hold the seal, and as the ball comes their way on the baseline, they kind of let up. And when you let up, you allow that help defender to step in front. He held the seal, and that opened up the lane to the basket. 
That is a rare miss from White, who is an 83% free throw shooter. Carolina's second half shooting percentage is 70 plus percent right now. Oh, Wake Forest shooting almost 60 percent. Yeah, dwarfed by 70 something. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous, right? I mean, I, I don't want to say that it's just been great shooting. I think the defense has been lacking at times. Maybe so, but if I see a lot of made baskets, I'm not going to argue with it. Yeah, oh, enough. Entertaining oh. basketball. Make some, make some buckets. Offensive game. Dean Smith. Brandon Robinson makes a bucket at the three as Carolina pushes the lead out to nine. He's got 14. Roy exhorting his defense. Childress turns the corner, kicks it back out. Brown needs a three, and he's got it. John D. Brown with a bucket. They put Cole Anthony in about three straight ball screens, and he did a great job fighting over the top. But you've got to be aware on that throwback. The throwback is where the three is always open. Childress knocks it away from Anthony. Cole saves it. Christian Keeling's there in North Carolina. Up near the mid-court stripe with 10 on the shot clock. Anthony quickly passes it before the trap can get there. Robinson, clean look. Boy, really imploring his guys to lock down. I gotta think they're gonna go right back to this high ball screen situation. And probably go, continue to go to it. Sar on the alley-oop pass from Childress. You can see the defense starting to anticipate the next screen that lifted the entire defense. Great read by Childress to throw over the top. We got a little ball game here. Things have finally really picked up here. About five minutes left. Anthony Black from the elbow. Leakey's got seven. Back to a nine for North Carolina. Childress. Carolina led by double figures early in the first half. Wake Forest kept fighting back. Now the Demon Deacons could really use a defensive stop. And Anthony got away with going under on that screen. Uh, just a missed shot from Brandon Childress. Anthony wanted to get it to Brooks. Finally does serendipitously. Brandon Robinson open, and he missed a good look. Black chases it down and throws it off of Shondi Brown. It'll be North Carolina ball. It's amazing what happens. You make a few plays, you get the crowd into this game, and it lifts the energy of the entire team. 50-50 balls, defensive rebounds, offensive rebounds, even making good decisions. You can see what energy does to a program. 4.02 remaining to play here in Chapel Hill. Wake Forest uses a timeout down by nine. Forest. Carolina shooting 71% in the second half. Wake 57%. It all adds up. North Carolina, the nine-point lead in the ball. Two guards have been sensational. Brandon Childress and Cole Anthony. Leaky Black found Garrison Brooks and Shondi Brown knocks it out of bounds. And in one of the more frustrating rules in college basketball, you play seven seconds after a timeout, you get the stack column. But I, I think Cole Anthony's been terrific. Brandon Childress has played with a little edge today that you know, we've seen at times. I mean, what he did against Duke was terrific, but, but he's really come out and had answers. But he's taken on the challenge defending Cole Anthony as well. And he's right in his hip pocket, almost took the ball from him there. Brandon had his first career double-double, the first time these two teams played 14-10. Anthony had to force it up, and he missed it, and Wake Forest, so he needs to be efficient on the offensive end, down nine, Continue. three and a half to go. Ball screen, keep going to the ball screen, just see how they defend it. Don't be afraid to come back to it. Sometimes the re-screen on the ball screen is where you get your opportunity. North Carolina trying to win three in a row for the first time since November, Andrian White. Garrison Brooks another rebound. Finishing has been an issue for the Tar Heels, and see if they can do it tonight. Does Wake Forest have another rally in them? They rallied, of course, at home against Duke to pull off that big double overtime victory. Followed it up with a win against Notre Dame. And the Demon Deacons trying to sweep the season series from North Carolina, but then a little bit of trouble, or actually a lot of trouble, down nine with under three to play. You say the rally needs to start with stops. I mean, that's what it's really all about. You got to get stops first. And 
If you could take a good stop, get out, get an easy basket, do it in a short amount of time coming off the clock, that's that's ideal. The problem is they've struggled to get these big stops, and that's going to be a foul. Garrison Brooks going up, and Olivier Saar, who had a couple of great games recently, just picked up his fourth foul. He has been very quiet tonight. And nothing but net crew with the ACC Women's Tournament. Greensboro, Friday, 10 o'clock Eastern. That'll wrap up the quarters, have all the highlights, breakdowns of every game. You know, we get this analysis and insight one place. It is on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. See right now, 7 to 10 from the free throw line? Yep. It's, it's, it's hard to believe when you just, it's why you watch it. It looks good. Hard to believe that he misses so many. And chasing the ball right in front of us, Brandon Robinson first to it. That was a tough pass to handle. Brandon tries to get it back. Big scrum, possession arrow. He's pointing the opposite way from the way that Jeffrey Anderson is pointing. Brandon's going to retie shoelace. And possession arrow favors the Tar Heels. It's funny how everybody goes to call the timeout. Yeah. You know, if you just, I, I get it. It's like the automatic default. You got both teams calling timeout, and it seems like neither team ever gets it granted. I think the jump ball is another one of those ones that gets called so quickly because it, it can get ugly really quickly, yeah. too. That's the one anticipation call I don't mind. Getting everything set, Tim Cloggerty. Trying to figure out whether there was possession gained or not. He said no. And 16 seconds on the clock. Garrison Brooks, by the way, his third straight game, 25 points or more. <laughs> Terrific. 25.7 rebounds. And again, doing this without Armando Baker. A lot is asked of him. He's delivered. And he's trying to deliver two more. Sar with good defense with the four fouls. That's of little consequence at this point because Wake Forest Desperate now, down by 10. Kobe Neath, the freshman guard. There's Childress shooting it over. Keeling for three, and Childress now has 24, and Wake still has a pulse. Yeah, you had to wonder, at some point, Childress has to have the ball in his hands every single time down floor. Whether it's a ball screen or give it up and get it back, he, he's got to have the ball in his hands. He's done a great job with Cole Anthony. Cole Anthony's scoring, but I think he's, Childress has certainly made it tough. If it's an outstanding offensive player, that's really all you can ask. Makes him take a tough shot, Cole makes another tough shot. And that's also all you can ask, is, is make him make the toughest shot possible. The problem is, Cole Anthony's pretty darn skilled on the offensive end. Garrison Brooks hedges out. Three from the answer. wing, and Brown has the answer. And Wake Forest, two-possession game. Six-point lead for North Bend. Aggressive shooting the basketball. And when they use it well in that pick-and-roll situation, he's made good decisions. And Cole Anthony, all you can ask a defender do is to make him take the toughest shot possible. Cole Anthony, he's made some of the most <laughs> difficult shots I've seen all year. Well, he's really shooting the ball well right now. This North Carolina team has struggled to shoot it from three. But they look dangerous. Not tonight. Though. Yeah, they, they do. They do look dangerous. I don't know how the stamina will play once we get to Greensboro in the ACC tournament, but I don't think you'll be eager to see the men in sky blue when the tournament starts. Leaky Black's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. Leaky, about a 68% free throw shooter on the year. Yeah, stamina is definitely an issue, especially, again, we, we've talked about it particularly last week, even more so this week. Talk about the injuries. Yeah. You know, and, and Part of the issue with injuries is you can't go five on five in practice the way other teams might be able to go five on five in practice. And that's building up that game shape that you need. There's a lot more to it than just not having guys to play. Well, Sterling Man was missed most of the season. Baycott was the one in uniform there on the right part of the screen. Had a really strong freshman season prior to tonight. He'd been the only Tar Heel yeah. to start every game. You knew they were going with a different lineup on senior night tonight, but. Baycott had been the constant after that sprained ankle, unable to go tonight. North Carolina pushes the lead out to eight with 97 seconds to go. 
Garrison Brooks, we've talked about the guards and rightfully so, but Garrison Brooks just continues his excellent offensive play. I mentioned a moment ago, three straight games, he scored 25 points before. Well, I think part of it is he's making better reads. He's developed throughout the course of the season to the point where he's making good reads. He's putting himself in position to be able to score. He's holding his ground. And quite frankly, guys like Paul Anthony have done a good job finding him. He is our Zaxby's player of the game, Garrison Brooks, who's been an inside presence, helped get Olivier Saar and Odi Oguama, for that matter, and a whole lot of foul trouble. How long did it take for Odi Oguama? Not, not long. That was the other night. They said it was uh, Danny Bates. Yep. North Carolina State. Picked yep. up, what, uh, four and 11 minutes? You know what Garrison wants to do? when he finishes playing basketball? Take my job. Yes, he does. Great. Or a talk show host, either one. He's doing he, the talk show thing. He's from Lafette, Alabama. He's in terms of the radio station there. Yeah, the star beats him to the basket that time. He's, Wake Forest hangs around, still down by six. It looks as if this is going to be a matter of taking care of the basketball and making free throws for North Carolina. All right, you've got to get it to the right guy's hands. Paul Anthony, he just has such a confidence about him. This is what you want to see. Running a couple of Demon Deacons at him. He, Passes it away for the trap to come. And Christian Keeling will go to the free throw line. He's a 74% free throw shooter, and it'll be the end of the evening for John D. Brown. Friday night, 9 o'clock Eastern time, the next edition of Bald Men on Campus, our weekend studio basketball show. They preview the weekend's ACC slate of games. Latest news from around the conference. Follically challenged, Jay Billis, Alfonso <laughs> Ellis, and Seth Greenberg all host that show. Did you see the internet sensation that debuted a couple of weeks ago that I host called Not Bald Men on Campus? We, I found some guys on our college game day crew with glowing, luxurious <laughs> manes, and we talked about television and basketball and how and go? how distracting that bald people can be when we try to perform our jobs well. It is distracting. Those to, three particular like bald men. know everything, too. Well, you know, not Fonz. I'm not saying a single no, bad thing about Fonz. No, no, no. Because it's a scientifically proven fact, at least by me, that two or three bald men are perpetually grumpy, yes. and the other one is wildly happy. That, this well, this particular go. bald man, usually happy, may be grumpy right now with his team down by seven. Disappointed. Not for his team's shown some fight tonight. Look, I'm not closing the door on him yet because they've got that guy. Children, he's been terrific. But North Carolina is certainly in the driver's seat at the moment. And Anthony's fouled in the backcourt. But I, I think Wake Forest, Wake Forest has, has shown a lot of grit. You kept using the phrase answers. They have answers, and they answered many times, many challenges on a night when Carolina really shot the ball well again. I think part of the issue was, is Olivier Sars foul trouble. Really took him out of the first half. It didn't do much at all outside of two foul shots in the first half, and that's a guy you rely on heavily. I think that high pick and roll game, they figured something out late, but again, if you can't get stops and Carolina shoots, the way they did, look out. I don't care who it is in the ACC tournament. You better watch out for Carolina because, again, there's a team. They've been so close so many times. Different things have to happen. And Wake and North Carolina are going to pull even in the standings at the end of the night at 6 and 13. Carolina, should it be able to win at Duke and other things fall their way, they might be able to avoid playing on the first day of the ACC tournament as Saar will go to the free throw line with a chance to finish a three point play. And I think. That would have an impact on on whether you could reasonably expect yes. them to make a run to the championship game. Otherwise, you know, you start getting into that fourth game in four days as opposed to you know, yes. third game in four days. It's a little bit different. Yeah, I, I remember Big Ten tournament my gosh, sophomore year. Iowa did it four four days in a row and ended up winning the Big Ten tournament championship and. It's not easy, let me tell you that. So it'd be a tall task, but I do feel like it's that hot team that you got to watch out for. It's also the team that has nothing left to lose. Yeah, I, it, the most the most notable case of that was uh, Jim Calhoun in yes. UConn with oh, Kimball Walker gosh. winning five and five days and then winning six in the Kimball NCAA Walker made tournament. a career out of that tournament alone. Well, he's had a pretty good career. No, but I'm saying, that, but yeah. it, was, it was really, I mean, you talk about being put on the national stage. He did it. He was already good to begin with, but man, almighty. And Brandon Robinson misses the free throw, so 42 seconds left. Yeah. We're, we're kind of 
moving into big picture game wrap conversation, but North Carolina hasn't hasn't uh, slammed the door on this yet. Well, foul shooting's gonna be key, and then get, get a stop. Robinson one of two. He has 18, a good night for the senior. Childress, all the way to the basket. Sar missed the follow stuff. Anthony chases it down. It's knocked down out of bounds, and I think they're gonna call the foul. Tim Clogarty's gonna step in there and before things escalate and call the foul on Jacoby Neath. Yeah, that's kind of one of those, if the ball was out on Wake, maybe you don't call the foul, but it got hit off of Cole Anthony's leg, so they called the foul. Usually better when I see it three times in slow mo. Well, that's a frustrating foul miss for Saar, who's had a little bit of a difficult night. He's been really playing some terrific basketball. He's scratched out 12 points, 11 rebounds, double double tonight. But he just hasn't felt yeah. as, as dominant as he as he has in some recent games. Well, he hasn't had the presence. Yeah. That, that's what it is. That you're a better team when you have that presence on the floor. You know he's a guy you can throw the ball into, but also he's going to occupy defenders in the paint. Really hasn't had that all game. Carolina has 91. Anthony and Brooks have 51 of those. Yeah, I think, I think Cole Anthony's been terrific. You know, at, at times, yes, he can settle and take a lot of shots, but, man, he, he's one heck of a scorer, and he's gotten better at sharing the basketball, creating opportunities for teammates. Makes this an even more dangerous team. That drive to the basket was somewhat significant for some of our viewers, I would imagine, as are these free throws coming up. I have no idea what's going on. Anthony is 74% shooter. 27. Anthony has 28, that's six off his season and career high of 34. 10 point lead. White rolls out. North Carolina has it. And it appears as we're winding away the final seconds on senior night, and Roy's gonna yep. call a timeout yep. and get Caleb Ellis, who was the sixth starter tonight, and left the floor because you can only play five at a time. Caleb will get a few seconds to run. Member of the North Carolina bass fishing team. Played JV ball here for a couple years. Elevated to the varsity. The other seniors returning to the floor as well. As North Carolina will have a victorious senior night. But also get a chance to give your senior on the floor, or seniors on the floor, an opportunity to receive a nice hand. Danny Manning, I watched Danny Manning, he, he knew it was coming too. He actually waved them down. Yep. He was fully aware. And Danny's gone to his bench uh, as well. So Robbie O'Han and Caleb Ellis, 34 and 25, are on the floor, and somebody needs to get them the basketball, and they need to shoot. There's Robbie. Put it up, Robbie. <laughs> shoot the ball, Robbie. Oh, no, 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 no. Robbie. He's a, he's, you to boo. he's a fine young man, but he needs to let that one fly, Pally. 93-83, North Carolina gets the job done. Yeah, I think North Carolina is showing us a little something. You got to give them a lot of credit for sticking it. This has been a tough season when the expectations are always high at Carolina, but they're going to be a dangerous ACC tournament team. I'll tell you, watch out. 93-83, our final for John Crispin, Brooke Weisbrod, and our entire excellent ESPN ACC Network crew. I'm Reese Davis. Thanks for watching. Upon further review is next.